Hey, it's Sam, and today I'm going to be talking about my StackMat Timer V2 Arduino project. Now, as you could probably guess by the V2, this is going to be a continuation of a previous project, my Arduino StackMat Timer. So I highly recommend that if you haven't seen that video already, you go check out that video, and you can do that by clicking in at, on the card in the top right. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, I will start talking about the timer. With this V2, we have some technology that is much more similar, if not the same, to how a stack mat timer actually works, a real official stack mat timer. So this is the stack mat timer right here, and you'll see that in the middle we have the LCD screen, and then on the left we have an aluminum foil pad, and we do on the right as well. All the electronics are inside of this 3D printed case, which I'll be taking apart later in the video, so you can see what's on the inside. Now, these are capacitive touch sensors, and I'll explain how I use that later. But I'm just going to go into the demo right now, so you can see how it works. It's very similar to the V1 in terms of usage. So let's just click it on with the button on the left side, and the stack net timer is on. So when I put my hands on, it gives me a scramble, just like the V1 did. Okay, now I've scrambled my 2x2. Two two. So what I'll do is I'll put my hands on the pads again, and I'm going to put uh, my fingers on so that I can show you what's going on. I put my hands on the pads, and it's telling me to inspect the cube. When I let go, it will start timing me. There's time. The camera's not picking that up too well. But you can sort of see it there. Now when I stop the timer, it will tell me to solve the cube when ready. Let's go ahead and solve the cube. We start with both of our hands on the timer. And then we just reach out and start solving the cube. So, right now it's just timing us. And I stopped. And you can see here the time is 16.812, and it says plus 2 there. So if you're familiar with the World Cubing Association regulations, then you'll know that if you go above the inspection time which of 15 seconds, which I did in this demo, then you will get a plus 2, and if you go for above 17 seconds, then you will get a DNF, and I will also demonstrate that for you right now. So I'll just restart the timer. It shows me the scramble again now, and I'll start the inspection process, and I know I'm not doing it because this is just demonstrating that the DNF feature works, and then, so right now the inspection timer is going, and I will stop it when it is 17 seconds past. Okay, it was 17 seconds past there, about negative 3 seconds, and it's telling me to go when ready. And if I release my hands, and then stop the timer, it will show me that I got a DNF because I went over two seconds past the 15 seconds inspection time. And of course, just to reset it, this is a uh, feature that the StackMat Timer V1 did not have. StackMat Timer V1, you would have to reset the program, but I decided to change that since the reset button on the Arduino is inaccessible with this box so that all you have to do is touch the two pads and you have reset. Now that I'm showing you how it works, I'm going to get into the explanation of the hardware. I won't be showing the software since it's basically the same as the software to the StackMat Timer V1. What I'll be doing is I'll be showing the card in the top right to the code view in the StackMat Timer V1. You'll look at that. It's pretty much the same except for the fact that the uh, aluminum foil pads, the capacitive touch sensor pads, are used inside the ultrasonic sensor. And of course, there's a um, few changes and resetting and things like that. With that out of the way, I'll explain how the hardware works. 
we're going to start from the outside in. So on the outside, you'll see there's this gray box, which I 3D printed, and we'll talk about more about that soon. And there's these two aluminum foil pads, and the LCD screen is the only real electronic component that is popping out. So I'll start with the aluminum pads. These aluminum pads are just aluminum foil, as I mentioned. They are glued to the gray box, and there are some uh, there are some jumper wires soldered to the aluminum foil pads, so that there is a good strong connection. I soldered this and this on, and that's why you can see these little bumps in the aluminum foil. That's where the wire solder is. Now let's move on to the three printed box. I designed this shell to the Stackman timer using Tinkercad. As you see here, it's split into two parts. There is the right part and the left and middle parts binded together. I would have printed it all in one piece, but the problem is the printer is not big enough to do that. And I will actually show you the super glue residue from gluing the two together. So let's flip this around here. This design was almost all comprised of boxes. The only cylindrical things were with the wire holes. And just made some holes in the boxes to fit in all the electronics and the hole for the LCD. And one thing I forgot to do is put a hole here so that the wire could go from the electronics here all the way to here. And that, I will actually show that I just drilled a hole in the plastic to push that through. If I were to make a second copy of this or another iteration, then I would fix that and print it correctly. One more detail I would like to mention about the design is you might notice these ridges here on the box. Is Those are just to keep the aluminum foil pads there. It's not too important when it's already glued on. But back when I was just testing it, I had them rubber banded on, so it was easier that way to have them not slide off. That's pretty much all to, for the 3D printed design, so let's move on to the electronics now. Now, so let's switch this thing off. See, this is how we switch the things off. There's some lights in there, red light, blue light, green light, and we'll just switch this off. Green light turns off and switched off and so on. So I'll unplug this, and... The electronics are secured with this piece of cardboard on the bottom and some packing tape. Now to show you this, I'm going to have to take this apart. So I'm going to cut the tape and show you all the insides. Okay, I've removed the tapes and now the electronics are free to slide out. One thing that I find somewhat important to mention is you can see on the cardboard here, it's been peeled from tape several times. And that's because I thought it was complete, so I taped it all up, and then I realized there was a bug in the code, and I had to take it all out. Because, in order to program the Arduino, let me just read this power module so you can see better. In order to program the Arduino, you'll see that we have to plug it in through the Arduino port right there. And with the power module in the way and everything secured in place, we can't do that, so we have to take it apart. The best way to view this properly is to take out this bottom piece of cardboard, which actually, once I take out the front piece of tape, is simply held in there by pressure between the electronics breadboard and 3D printed. And then here's just another piece of cardboard to have it somewhat secured and not have it jostling around. The LCD works the same as the Stackma Timer V1, so if you'd like to see how that works, then you can just go ahead and like I said, watch the original video if you haven't already. Now, the only other two important things is, since you may have noticed that I removed the LEDs from version 1 for the screen just saying everything, we have these two wires here. These are for the capacitive touch sensors. At the back, we have this wire going through this hole that I showed in the 3D printed design, and that is soldered to the aluminum pad on the other side. And this comes in here to the Arduino. Same thing with this red wire. This red wire goes all the way through behind this plastic wall 
and goes here. There's these two resistors. They're mega ohm resistors. Those are for the capacitive touch sensors. And both of them start at 4, which is the power source for the capacitive touch sensors. And they go to pins 6 and 8, which are where the capacitive sensors are placed. Now, of course, the biggest change of this whole thing is the capacitive touch sensors, so I find it reasonable to talk about the capacitive touch sensors. But as I mentioned, there's a power source from pin 4 that goes to the capacitive touch pads. Now, the read pins are pins 6 and 8. When you put your hands on, you modify the voltage and frequency on these pads, and the Arduino can, Arduino can read that and determine whether your hand is on or off. The way it's done in the code is it uses the capacitive touch sensor library where if your hand is placed then it will return a high value usually in the hundreds or thousands and if your hand is not touching they'll return a low value usually less than a hundred and you can imagine that that is very easy to determine whether or not the user's hand is on the paths. That's all I have to say in this video about the stack mat timer v2. I'm really proud of it because I can easily see it being something that I will use in the future in my cubing practice, home, and other places because it's pretty sturdy and works pretty nicely. I would like to give a thanks to the Workmaster, which is one of my watchers on YouTube, and he's the one who encouraged me to make this. So if it weren't for him, this might not have been made. This is pretty awesome, so you should thank him in the comments for encouraging me to do this. If you want to see some more action with this stack map timer, then click on the top right for another one of my videos where I just use the stack map timer and some of myself, you know, just real hands-on use. Besides that, thanks for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe if you haven't already.